and we welcome you to this house of worship. We hope that today's service will lift your spirits and inspire you for the week ahead. I ask you to consider during this moment of silence as we prepare our hearts. Can you be thankful without remembering? A moment of silence. Please join me in our call to worship. This place of worship has been prepared for us to come with songs of thanksgiving before our God. Bring, our, bring your gifts to the altar and share your stories of blessings. God has provided so much, even as a beautiful day, so let's raise our voices and Our first hymn, our opening hymn, is in the Black Kingdom. For the truth of all truth.
say thanks for our generous donations to replace the organ. It sounds wonderful. Prayer of invocation. O oh God of steadfast love, we enter this space today to worship you in eyes. We come into your presence singing your praises. You are our creator. You are your people. Be with us, O oh God, as we celebrate all of creation. We give thanks for the sun, the water, the air, and winds that nourish our earth, which provides the bounty we enjoy. Bless us as we bless your name. Amen. the Lord your God is bringing you to a wonderful land, a land with streams of water, springs and wells that gush up in the valleys and on the hills, a land of wheat and barley, vines, fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land where you will eat food without any shortage. You won't lack a thing there, a land where stone is hard as iron and where you will mine copper from the hills. You will eat, you will be satisfied, and you will bless the Lord your God in the wonderful land that he's given you. But watch yourself. Don't forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commands or his case laws or his regulations that I am commanding you right now. When you eat, get full, build nice houses, and settle down. And when your herds and your flocks are growing large, your silver and gold are multiplying, and everything you have is thriving, don't become arrogant, forgetting the Lord your God, the one who rescued you from Egypt, from the house of slavery, the one who led you through this vast and terrifying desert of poisonous snakes and scorpions, of cracked ground with no water, the one who made water flow for you out of the the one who fed you manna in the wilderness, which your ancestors had never experienced, in order to humble and test you, but in order to do good, to do good to you in the end. Don't think to yourself, my own strength and abilities have produced all this prosperity for me. Remember the Lord your God. He's the one who gives you the strength to be prosperous in order to establish the covenant he made with your ancestors. And that's how things stand right now. These words are for our understanding. You will have a task in just a moment, so don't get too comfy. Okay? Goodness, there are lots of people with bags here. Lots of bags. It's too heavy. It might break if, if you don't. Come on, Ben. You can come up. Nice to see everybody this morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Does Thanksgiving make you happy? How come? 
So what? What? Because they get to hang out with your family. That's the greatest. It's so good. What about you? Celebrates us coming here and getting to and, and to thank the Indians for sharing. Thank the Native Americans for sharing their space with us, huh? Mm -hmm. And you know, I come from Cape Cod, where the Wampanoag Indians live. That's their homeland. So I see a lot of Native Americans. And we often think about Thanksgiving when I'm there with them. What else? What else makes you happy about Thanksgiving? Eat pie. Yes. What kind? Pumpkin with whipped cream or a vanilla ice cream. No, see, the answer to that is yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, right. Up here on the table, there is something. Yes. What is it? A cornucopia. Yes. What were you going to say, Tommy? Cornucopia. There's another name for it. Do you know what it is? Yes, Thomas. The cone shaped basket full of food. Yes, that's close. A tangle of vines. Yes, okay. So if I went over here and I went like this, what? If I blow into this end, what's it going to do? I wish it would make a noise. It's the shape of a horn, isn't it? It's called a horn of plenty, right? So a horn of plenty. And there's a story that goes with it that we're going to learn about later. And I'll be glad to share it with you during our potluck, because you'll be in church school. A horn of plenty is a horn-shaped thing with plenty of stuff in it, right? Okay. So I noticed that some of you brought some bags up here with you. And I would like to invite you, if you brought a bag up here, to put your food in there while I ask this very important question. If you could fill that horn of plenty with plenty of something, what would it be? Hot dogs. <laughs> Tacos. Ice cream. What else? Doritos. Doritos. What else? Lentils. Yum. Lentils. I love lentils, but everything. Okay, so remember last week when I dubbed you all youth stewards of the First Congregational Church of Southampton, United Church of Christ? Today is your very first duty as a youth steward. If there are people out there who have bags of food that they brought to share with our neighbors, they need somebody to come and get the food from them and bring it up and put it into our horn of plenty. So, while Kathy plays some nice music, we're going to go. If you have a bag of food, just raise your hand or raise your bulletin or raise something so that the kids know to come and find you and get your food and bring that forward. Bring it back up. You can take it out of the bags if you want. Then we can see all the wonderful things that were brought for us to share with other people. Ramen noodles, pasta, mac and cheese. What have you got? Macaroni, grape jelly, stop it. All these wonderful things. If it doesn't fit, you can put it around the bottom in one of the baskets. Good job. Bring it up. Look at all of these things that we have to share with all of our neighbors and our friends. We 
live in a wonderful world that is full of plenty of things. You can put it right up in one of the baskets. Go ahead. Help them. Nice. We live in a place where some people don't have as much as they need. And one of the things that our church does as part of our being grateful for all that we have is that we share what we have with other people through our community cupboard. The community cupboard run by Luann Archambault is going to take all of this delicious food and they're going to give it to the people in our community who live in Southampton or East Hampton or Westfield or Holyoke or somewhere else. We'll leave it right over here in case somebody wants to get it. And they will be able to receive some of this delicious food, and so they can also join us in being thankful. Okay? So, do me a favor, raise your hands, elbows next to your side, hand, blessing hands up and ready to go, because we now have our next duty as youth stewards, and that is to share God's love all over all of these gifts. So let us pray. Holy and gracious God, take this food that we have gathered, that we have brought out of our abundance, out of our gratitude, and bless it, and share it with all those people who are here and in need, so that they will know your love through us, and all together we will work to make your world one of abundance and lots and lots of thankfulness. And all of God's people said, Thank you very much. After our blessing, we will head to our church school. One, two, three. We are thankful for the abundance of children in our sanctuary today, in our church school every Sunday, and for those families that share their children with us. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus! Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. And then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. And then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. May God bless this reading and our understanding of this holy word. Let us pray. Loving God, we have before us a bounty, a beautiful abundance of gifts that come from the hearts of us. We thank you for endowing us with the desire to reach out to others, to be loved. Help us to remember that were it not for you, we would not. As we consider these words, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So when a music student bought, brought his French horn to the instrument shop for repair, he complained that the instrument felt stuffy and he couldn't blow air through it. Now, it's not unusual to find partial blockages in brass instruments, 
<clears throat> but sometimes small items get lodged in the tubing. And when the shop owner tested the instrument, the horn was indeed completely blocked. And so the shop owner took the French horn. Now, French horn, if you remember, is that brass curly one with a big bell on the front. After much probing and prodding, a small tangerine dropped out of the bell. Oh, said the musician when he was handed the fruit. Seeing the bewildered look on the shop owner's face, he explained, well, my mom used the horn as a cornucopia for a Thanksgiving centerpiece. <laughs> Today, we fill the cornucopia out of our abundance. Just to be on the safe side, that's the cornucopia right there. Not that. I'm grateful that our brand new organ is digital because imagine how much work it would be to get tangerines out of those old pipes. Derived from the Latin cornu, meaning horn, and copia, meaning plenty, the cornucopia has long been used as a common harvest symbol associated with plentiful bounty. Originally, it was an actual horn from an animal. According to the ancient Greeks, the Horn of Plenty was broken off the head of an enchanted she-goat by Zeus himself. As the myth goes, the infant Zeus was hidden away from his father, the Titan Kronos, in a cave on the island of Crete. Now, while in hiding, the baby Zeus was fed and cared for by Amalthea, a figure alternately depicted as a naiad, a water nymph, or a she-goat, now, whether Amalthea was a goat herself or just its caretaker, most of the myths agree that Zeus, while suckling at the teat of a magic goat, broke off its horn, which began to pour forth a never-ending supply of nourishment. Thus, the symbol of the Horn of Plenty was born. And then the Romans appropriated the symbol in, the Ovid, in Ovid's poem, Metamorphosis, the hero Theseus comes upon the moping river god Achilles and notice that one of his horns is missing. The pouting river spirit then tells the tale how he battled Hercules over the hand of a woman, and in the end, Hercules snapped off one of his horns. Nymphs filled it with the choicest fruits of autumn, and it became the holy symbol. Thanks for its appearances in artwork that portrayed pastoral abundance, the cornucopia became a symbol of the harvest season and its image morphed from its origin as a horn to just a horn-shaped basket, or a tangle of weeds, as the children said, a tangle of vines. It also became a more common physical artifact found at harvest festivals, and there's one right on the front of the bulletin. It's possible that there was a cornucopia at the first Thanksgiving here in America, but since there are no pictures, we really aren't sure. There's a long history, though, of filling a horn with all that abundance. Now, that's a lot of information for you to remember. And if we never remembered it, I'm not sure that any of us our scripture this morning from Deuteronomy reminds us what to remember that will make us different. Don't forget the Lord your God. When you eat, get full, build nice houses and settle down. And when your herds and your flocks are growing larger, your silver and gold are multiplying, and everything you have is thriving, don't become arrogant, forgetting your God. Remember your God. Don't get arrogant that you did it all by yourself and forget where it came from. It's not the cornucopia that we need to remember. We need to remember what God has done for us. And then, like the one who was healed, return to thank God for the blessings and abundance we receive. Which begs the question, can we be thankful without remembering? If we didn't remember what it was like to be out in the cold without our coat, would we be grateful for our warm houses? If we didn't remember what it feels like to be alone, would we be thankful when a friend invites us out for a cup of coffee and a movie? 
If we didn't remember what it was like to be hungry, would we even notice if we are full? Remembering is the key. We are a product of what comes before us. This church is a product of the work of people like the Lymans and the Bascoms and the Walcotts, the Chapmans, the Conants, the Searles, the Howlands, and more. This church is a direct product of the pastors who came before, Judd and Gould and White, Morse, Gardner and Ledger, and more. The past sets up what is to come. We lean on the work and the dedication of those who came before. We are never to forget the past. The fact that we are the product of the past, that the ground on which we stand is made of soil that has been here for a long time. That if we sunk our shovel into the soil of this community, we would cut through 275 layers. That all our sowing is upon the prepared ground and pot dressing contributed by all the older periods, which is why we are encouraged by the scripture to remember God. Ultimately, everything we have is possible because God created it. The cornucopia, what fed Zeus, what was filled after Hercules broke it off, what held the abundance that came from the soil that God promised to God's people is filled again today. It is a symbol of all that we receive, a symbol that we are richly blessed. And if it happened before, it will happen again. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. And so the cornucopia becomes a symbol not only of abundance, but of hope in the God who provides abundance. The cornucopia becomes evidence that we can lean into the memory and spring ahead into an uncertain future because God will continue to provide. Because the Lord your God is bringing you to a wonderful land, a land with streams of water, springs and wells that gush in the valleys and on the hills. Thank God for all that God provides. Thank God for those who came before us to make this today possible. Thank God for each of you who shares in this community out of your abundant hearts and lives to make this community possible today. We look back at all that has led us here and we say thank you. We look forward to knowing that all will be made well. God did it, and God will continue to do it, and will do more than we can ask or imagine. It's a horn of plenty. It's a cornucopia. It is love. responsive hymn will be black in the black hymnal number 420 we praise you O God and we will remain seated while we sing <laughs>
us bring these people and concerns and joys that we share, those that we have held in our hearts and those printed in our bulletin before God. On this day, O oh God, we give thanks in all kinds of communities or even in solitude. Our desire in this moment is to come before you with our prayers of thanksgiving. For some of us, the words we offer will flow easily from our lips. For others, trying to name our blessing may prove difficult. This year's thanksgiving may be very different from previous years. A new table at which to sit, new persons sitting with us, or a dear one absent. Worries crowding out our sense of blessing. These realities may reshape our prayers from years past. To seek joy may lead through heartbreak. Whatever our reality, O oh God, we ask that you help us focus on how we are living our lives. Help us recognize all the ways you are present in our lives this year. Help us gather the strength we need for today and for all of our tomorrows. May those who need extra strength feel your empowering presence, surely. And live. Those on our prayer list and those whom we hold in our hearts. May we respond with immeasurable gratitude to the celebrations we are blessed by and the ways they increase our intimacy with all of your people. And those who are here with us today, physically or in spirit. Grant us the satisfaction of intimacy with Jesus, your great gift to us, through whom you offer living water, bread of life, more than we can ask or imagine. Help us to extend our prayers of thanksgiving to you into tomorrow with joyful spirits. We are loved and blessed and thankful and extend our prayer of thanksgiving to you with joyful spirits using the words that Jesus taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy name. Thank you. 
you for all the ways that you have brought us along the long and winding way. We thank you for your generosity with us, and we thank you for showing us the way to generosity. It's a journey, and we are grateful to have you with us on that path. Bless these gifts that we offer. May they bring others on the journey as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is printed in your bulletin. intertwined with the lives of others and with all of God's creation. May we be bold to praise God in our thanksgiving. May the God of giving shower you with blessings. May Jesus journey with you in a life of grateful generosity. And may the Holy Spirit open your heart to see and respond to the bounty all around. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.